Hey, welcome to Tell Us Something. Pat Abbey is in the 18th year of a five-year plan. He splits his time between South Florida and Victor, Montana. He especially likes Montana in winter, so he can get away from all the snowbirds who fly south. Please welcome Pat Abbey. Shooting jackrabbits and niggers was the reply to my question, why do all the pickup trucks have gun racks and guns in them? Mississippi, 1971. The driver, who turned out to be a editor from a major newspaper in Jackson, went on to say the solution to the race problem was let them uprise. There's more of us than them. Or we'll interbreed with them all and we'll breed them out of existence. Two liberal college kids from New England hitchhiking through Mississippi in 1971. The irony of it all was that we <clears throat> had just spent four days in a spiritual center in South Carolina where we contemplated on the beach and we meditated in meditation rooms and we had communal, uh, communal meals, and discussions about God realization and the seven levels to get there, and the world was it good, and it was everything was good. So this was like the irony of it all, and um, <clears throat> that we were here. Backing up a little bit, I am a child of the '60s. I graduated from high school, uh, grammar school in '61, high school in '65. Should have graduated in 69 from college, but by the grace of the low-grade gods, I uh, made it till 70 and got to experience the uh, marches on DC, and Kent State, and the pass failed from the student strikes, and then I get, finally got out. Also during that time, <clears throat> uh, it was kind of like the end of the, the late 60s and early 70s were pretty inundated with drugs and psychedelics and hallucinogens. And my uh, good friend Ken and I had this little cottage industry where we would procure and facilitate the use of these drugs with our classmates and, uh, fr and friends of classmates and friends of friends and friends and friends. So when Kenny came up to me with a suggestion that we hitchhike to California and pick up a pound of mescaline, um, I was in. I said, that sounds like a plan. So we made the plan. It was winter, so we were going to head south and then go across the south and up to San Francisco, which was the mecca for drugs back then, uh, score the dope, and take a train back. So also, I kind of refer to this as the asset years, but also there was this parallel universe of spiritualism and the Maharishi and and all these cults were springing up. And apparently, if you do enough asset, you see God. And then they would pick up the pieces and kind of bring you back to reality or their reality. So Kenny had heard about this center in South Carolina, the Maribaba Spiritual Center. And uh, he suggested we stop there on the way. And I said, I'm in. So we went there. And uh, it, was pretty, it was a pretty amazing place. Um, Baba had just died in 1969, and his, his disciples, who were still there, would uh, you know, give it, uh, share his teachings and uh, some of his philosophies and stuff. And it was all pretty up, up and up. They wouldn't let you stay there because they believed you had to live in the real world. And uh, you could go there to get your batteries recharged. But it was everything you'd think of a... Uh, you know, of a, of a meditation center and just a really nice place to go. So we went there first and then we headed west because we had to live in the real wife, life and we had a mission. Uh, in Atlanta, we got picked up by a couple of black guys in a truck about seven o'clock in the morning and we shared a bottle of Thunderbird, which I can still taste to this day. Uh, they were kind of commenting about the fact that they wanted to move to Chicago to get away from the 
uh, where they could be more free and get under, away from the racism and segregation that they experienced in the South. Uh, it was an interesting ride. We, in Alabama and outside of Birmingham, we got picked up by a civil rights activist who uh, explained to us that the city of Birmingham was 95% black and all the white people got elected. And he said the reason was that, one of the reasons was the fact that um, the, they would recruit the college kids at the university and register them to vote. And that's how they kept the power. And he was there to kind of disrupt that. And it was pretty interesting thing. Uh, one fun part came in, uh, in Louisiana where we got picked up by this guy outside of Shreveport where he had a date in Shreveport at six o'clock. He picked us up at five and it was a hundred miles away. <laughs> and we made it. <laughs> and it was a, probably the most thrilling hour of my life, uh, only because I'm alive. On that. So we finally got out of Louisiana and into Texas and we were thinking that we were out of the deep south, but apparently we weren't. Um, Texas was, you, if you, you could carry a gun in your glove compartment in Texas because that was considered a saddlebag. Uh, you know, and, and when, you're on the, uh, when you're hitchhiking on the road, people pass information back and forth and they would tell you there's a city that you're gonna come up to if you get caught hitchhiking in it, it's 30 days hard labor, no courts, nothing, you just do it. So you, you kind of <clears throat> pass this word back and forth. Uh, We've, we got to Big Spring, Texas, and we ate in a Salvation Army one night. And you know, we're 22-year-old kids now, and we're sitting there waiting for to go to dinner. And all these guys would come in. There were hobos, and they were coming in off the Santa Fe and, and all the diff from different directions. And we sat there with their mouths open, listening to these old timers tell stories about jumping trains, and um, you know, just it was fascinating. They were, and I did learn that if you had $67 in your pocket, you could never be arrested for vagrancy. Um, so th pass it on. It's probably worth more today. But on that, uh, we've, we got to California. We went to San Diego to Kenny's great aunt, where she said, would you like to go to the San Diego Zoo? And of course, we said, no, you've seen one zoo. You've seen them all. So that was probably the biggest mistake we made on the whole, on the whole trip. Uh, got up to San Francisco, hooked up with our friends, and uh, went to the Haight, did the Golden Gate Park, it had 25 cent pork bows in Chinatown, went over to Mill Valley, climbed Mount Tamalpais, saw my first Redwoods, uh, saw my first cable TV, saw my first, uh, went to my first organic grocery store, and then it was back. Remember, we have a drug deal going on here. So, we, so, so it was back to San Francisco. But because of the experience at the, at the center, at the Baba Center, we, uh, and then the conversations along the road, we had become drug free. And we had decided that we were not going to do the deal. So we didn't. And um, instead of taking the train back, we decided to hitchhike. So we went down to Bakersfield and then headed east. But, while we were in San Francisco, everybody was talking about this big earthquake that was coming. And I mean, like, everybody was talking about it. And they said, oh, it's coming soon. I'm going, like, this is California drugs. You know, they're just kind of dreaming. So we were about a day out of uh, Bakersfield heading east. And sure enough, on the radio came was the big earthquake in February of 71 in Bakersfield and up through the valley. So we kind of looked at each other and went, whoa. And that. So I uh, got back to Nashville. Uh, it was about, it was freezing, so we took a bus back to Connecticut, told our investors the, the bad news, and, um, you know, life goes on. But a couple of things come from my experience was when you're standing out in the middle of uh, nowhere in Mississippi or Louisiana, and you're 1,500 miles away from home, you can't call your mother to pick you up, and you know, you're on your own, and you have to make it on your own. And I've taken that lesson with me throughout life, that there's times when it's up to us to make our own destiny, because nobody's going to do it for you. And one of the lessons that I learned at the Baba Center, which I still, t still remember, I don't practice, but I remember, was that Baba used to say that all things that are real are given and received in silence. 
And on that note, good night and thanks. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you to all of the storytellers for getting up here and being so brave. Thank you so much. And um, thank you to the Missoula Community Foundation for fiscally sponsoring us. Thank you for Woo! to the Montana, the University of Montana Bookstore. Thank you to the top hat and the fucking staff here. Kick ass again tonight. Please, please tip your bartenders. Thank you to Fact and Fiction Books, Rock and Rudy's, Joyce. For helping with so many things. Uh, Miriam Griffin for designing a flyer this year is so awesome. And thank you to all of our storytellers. You guys are awesome. I was afraid this that adventure would be like, well, I went on this trip to Amsterdam and it's awesome. <laughs> thank you for bringing your A game. That was great. Thank you to all of you for coming. Some of you were here at like 3.30. Like, that was pretty amazing.